Welcome, GLCT visitors and members. On behalf of GLCT, we would like to appreciate you for being with us on today, whether virtually or in person. We know your attendance could have been anywhere else, so we appreciate you for being here. I'm Nia Johnson, and I'm here with your announcements. Our mission here at GLCT is to build people to love God, to love family, and to love their neighbor. If you don't know, every month we have a small business spotlight where we take a business each month, acknowledge, and support the business for that month. And this month we are spotlighting our very own Sister Christina Schumann's business, Crafty Creation, where she specializes in gift baskets and boxes. So if you want to give a loved one a basket for the holiday, a birthday, or anniversary, or if you just want to donate to the cause, you can do so with the information given on the screen. If you don't know, we have a location out in Memphis, and we are there every second Sunday of the month. And you are always welcome to join, whether virtually or in person. So if you live in the area and you want to join with us, or if you know someone who would, you all are welcome. And don't forget, it's every second Sunday of the month. Don't forget, there's still time to pledge for the 2021 Kingdom Vision Campaign. Here at GLCT, we have a vision to raise $30,000 to go towards our production and media, community outreach, and various church projects. We're asking for 100 pledges of $300. If you need information on how to make a pledge, please email us at weareglct at gmail.com. If you would like to reach out or stay connected with GLCT, you can visit our website, follow us on social media, or send us an email at any time. Also, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are GOCT. GOCT family, those are our announcements on today. And once again, on behalf of GOCT, thank you for being with us. We love you so much, and we hope you have a... Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad to see you guys this morning. It's a beautiful morning. And we are here to hear more about the Lord. Come on, welcome in, welcome in, welcome the saints. Come on, let me see you guys in the comment section. Welcome, welcome. I hope you all have had a beautiful morning so far. I hope you've woke, woken up uh, refreshed and excited and happy. I'm so happy to be here today. I'm so, so happy. God has been so good, so good. And I'm just excited about the word today. I'm so excited. Uh, but mostly I'm excited to see you guys here with us. Come on in, come on in and welcome. We are here, Kingdom Impact Church. Welcome family. We're so excited. We are so excited for what God is doing for Kingdom Impact. And we're excited about where the Lord is taking us. And... Um, Come on in, guys. Come on in. We're so excited. We're so excited. Hallelujah. All right. So um, nothing changes. I'm still going to come in and worship and um, just set the atmosphere just a little bit. And if you guys can just sing along with me or just worship with me this morning, um, I feel like the Lord is just really wanting to come through in your homes, in your car. Um, if you're sleeping, if you're still in the bed, he wants to meet you. Um, so just worship with me today. You are worthy, Lord. You are beautiful. You're awesome, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We welcome you here, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Father. Come on, continue to tap on in. We welcome you guys to Kingdom Impact Church. Hallelujah, you're worthy, Jesus. Just worship with us today. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. If the altar's where you meet us, take me there. Take me there if you're looking for an offering. It's right here, my life is right here, and I'll be a living sacrifice for 
you You're a fire, the refiner I wanna be consumed I wanna be tried by fire Purified You take whatever you desire Lord, here's my life I wanna be tried by fire Purified You take whatever you desire Lord, here's my life If your glory wants to come in Let it fall We want it all Lord, your fire is consuming Fill this place Set it ablaze And now be a living Sacrifice For you You're a fire The refiner I wanna be consumed I wanna be tried by fire Purified You take whatever you desire Lord, here's my life I wanna be tried by fire Purified You take whatever you desire Lord, here's my life You're worthy, Jesus Hallelujah, God. You're worthy, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Come on and worship God wherever you are. Hallelujah. Come on and just lift your hands. Come on and just speak to Jesus and welcome him into your life, into your home. He's been so good to you. Hallelujah, God. You're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come in this place, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Clean my hands, purify my heart. I wanna burn for you, only for you. Clean my life as a sacrifice. I wanna burn. Jesus, take my hands and purify my heart. I want to burn for you, holy for you. Oh, Jesus, take my life and purify my heart. Because I want to burn for you. Jesus and purify my heart because I want to burn I want to burn for you holy for you take my life as a sacrifice because I want to burn for you You're a fire, the refiner. I wanna be consumed. You're a fire, the refiner. I wanna be consumed. You're a fire, the refiner. I wanna be consumed. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you today, God. We worship you today, oh God, in spirit and in truth. Lord, I'm asking for you to just come into this place, oh God. Lord, please have your way, God. Lord, decrease myself, oh God, just so that you may be increased and you may be glorified. Lord, we just give you all the glory, God. We give you all the praise, Lord. I speak healing into the households, Jesus. I speak deliverance into the households, oh God. I speak you, oh God, Jesus, into pe people's lives today, oh God. 
Lord, I'm asking, Lord God, Jesus, for you to come through and change our hearts, oh God, change our minds for you, Lord. We just thank you, God. You are so precious to us, God. And we glorify your holy name, Jesus. Lord, just come through. Have your way, God. Have your way in this place, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God, Jesus, on our virtual service today, oh God, Jesus. And be with us, oh God. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, oh God. We lift your holy name up. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, God. You are so worthy, God. And we praise your holy name. So, Lord, we lift you up, God. We sing praises to you, God. We're going to speak of your name today, oh God. We're going to speak of your kingdom today, oh God. And, Lord, change our hearts today, God. In this place, Lord, change our minds, oh God. And allow us to hear you, Lord. Allow us to hear you, Father God. We praise you and we bless your name. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. Are you excited to hear about the Lord today? Can you just type in there, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. Come on and type it. Say, I'm excited to hear about the word today, the word that the Lord has placed on my heart. I'm excited to tell you guys today with boldness, with truth, and I'm so excited for you guys to hear it. Come on, type it in there. I'm excited to hear God's word. I'm excited to hear God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, guys, let's dig in. Let's dig in. So the Lord laid on my heart um, to just read and study 1 Peter and 2 Peter. I've been reading that in um, just a few things stuck out to me. So I said, why not share this with the people of God? So um, we are going to be reading from 1 Peter today. If you want to go ahead and get that ready and prepared. Um, <clears throat> 1 Peter, um, what I'm going to read today really caused me to shift the way of my way of thinking and my way of living. And I really, really hope that this message today is able to shift your way of thinking and your way of living. The title for this lesson today is, It's Time to Change. It's time to change. If you can just type it in so somebody else can know when they log in that the title of this message is, It's Time to Change. Can you just tell yourself where you are right now? Say, it's time to change. Come on, don't be afraid. Say, it's time to change. It's time to change, people of God. Um, So what really, really struck my mind to this passage, uh, the other day I was going, um, I went grocery shopping. And you know, when you come home, you try to get, uh, put all the groceries on your arm or uh, just try to carry it all. Because you don't want to keep going in and out the house. It was cold outside. So I try to put all the groceries on my arms and carry it um, to our house. And I tried to figure out how am I going to unlock this door without put, placing my keys or putting the groceries on the ground. So you know me. I'm still trying. I'm kind of struggling trying to get my keys in my hand with the grocery, heavy groceries on my arms, y'all. They were heavy. Who they were heavy. Heavy groceries on my arm. And um, I got my keys. And for some reason, I don't know why I have two keys on my my little keychain. I have two keys on here. One is for the house and one is for our storage. And I really don't know why it's it's on here. It should be along with our other keys. But I decided um, to keep them on here. And I, as you can tell, they, they look just alike. I mean, they're both gold. They're both just the same size, all of that. So I'm trying to open and unlock the door while I have all of these groceries on my arms, heavy groceries. And I, I put the key in. I got the wrong key in there. I'm just like, oh shoot! I gotta switch keys now, and I'm I'm hot now. I'm breaking out of, on, in a sweat, and I'm trying to unlock the door. And so I took it out, and the keys went something like this. And I picked up the same key, y'all. 
to try to open the door and it just would not unlock. It would not unlock. So what I had to do was place all of my groceries down, or at least on one hand, one arm, place them down on the ground and focus so I won't put in the same key that I put in two times and there's only two keys on here. So I put my groceries down and I was able to refocus and focus on putting the right key in the door. And when I focused to put the right key in, it turned and it opened the door to our house. Then I was able to carry all of that stuff that I had on my, the heavy stuff, I was able to bring it into my home and lay it down. But that brought me to this point. You have two keys to choose from. In your mind, you may be thinking one thing is golden and the other one is golden as well. So I'm going to try to use both to enter into the kingdom of God. But there's only one key that will unlock the door to your home, to the kingdom. There is one key that is able to work no matter if they look alike, no matter if they're both gold. It's just one key that is able to to enter yourself into the kingdom of God. So my question for you today is, which key are you holding today? Which key are you holding? Are you confident in knowing that this key will unlock the door to the kingdom of God? Will this key, even though it looks like, is this the right key that I am holding to unlock that door? Do we do we want to live with purpose? Do we want to live to have an eternal life? Or do we want to live to die? We may uh, see death on earth, but after the death here on earth, we I want to live. I want to continue to have an eternal life with the Lord, our Savior. So a key has so many different formations and it has to be refined a certain way for it to unlock what belongs to the key. So when I was reading first Peter, I was very enlightened by a few facts. Um, I'm gonna I'm a list five facts. It's, the whole chapter is bomb and you just have to read it. You have to read it. And I'm gonna read most of it today just to give you a heads up, but please do not exit out of this, of this live. It's gonna get really good. So the five points that I have is, um, number one, I have an inher inheritance. Uh, that's one of the facts that I gained from this chapter. Number two is I will survive the trials. Number three is I have to or I must live holy. Number four is I must believe. And number five is the word of the Lord endures forever. I'm going to say that again. Some of the facts, the few facts that enlighten me are I have an inheritance. I will survive the trials and the tribulations. I have to and I must live holy and I must believe. And the last one is the word of the Lord endures forever. It endures forever. So let's go to first Peter. We're going to start with verse three and I'm actually going to read two different versions. We're going to read, um, first, first Peter verses, uh, three through five. And this speaks about our heavenly inheritance. I have an inheritance. You have an inher inheritance. We all do, but it depends on what key you're holding in order to gain that inheritance. I'm going to give you just a little bit longer to get to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. And again, the title of this lesson today is It's Time to Change. It's time to change. It's time to change. I want y'all to get that in your mind and in your heart. It's time to change. All right, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. I'm going to read... Um, this is going to come from the uh, New King James Version. And I'm going to read another version for you as well. Um, but it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. All right, I'm going to read to you a different version. This is the amplified version. Some may like it, some may not, but I just want you to um, just get a feel for what we are reading today. It says, Blessed, gratefully praised and adored, be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant and boundless mercy has caused us to be born again, that is to be reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose to an ever living hope and confident insurance um, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance inheritance which is imperishable beyond the uh, the reach of change and defiled uh, and undefiled and unfading reserved in heaven for you who are being protected and shielded by the power of God through your faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time So the first thing that stuck out to me was um, abundant mercy, abundant mercy. What is abundant mercy? It's much mercy. Abundant means much, uh, much, much mercy that the Lord has for us. Um, Abundant mercy is to have something in abundance. I'm sorry, to have something in abundance means to have it in a large amount. Did you know that God extends this mercy to us every single day of our lives because he is good and he is kind? We have to understand that every single day that we wake up is not us that wakes us up, but it's God and his abundant mercy, um, much mercy that he gives towards us. No matter what we've done that day, no matter what we get into, no matter what we're thinking, no matter what it is, God has given us much abundant mercy for us to keep going and and to change and to get it right, to get it together. God has given us that. Um, the way we behaved yesterday and, uh, the Lord knows we don't deserve today. The way we behaved years ago, the Lord knows we don't deserve to be here today, but God has allowed us to have time and time again to change, to change our mindsets, to change our perspective, to really get in the word of God and get to know and understand who he really is. We have to understand that the Lord has done so much for us. We can't forget that he died and he rose again for us and allowed us, that allowed us to be spiritually transformed, renewed, and born again. A lot of times we want to stay where we are. We want to complain about us being depressed. We want to complain about us being lonely and single and all this other stuff. We want to complain, but God is saying, look, I want you to look unto me. The help is from me. I want you to look unto me because I am here to make you um, born again, to renew your mind, to to transform you spiritually. We are um, all of the time going to other people, going to family members, going to to the TV, going to different reality shows to to see what love looks like as well. But love is Jesus. Jesus is love, what he's done for us. He was beaten for us. He was tormented from us. And we um, have the ability sometimes to just totally ignore everything that Jesus has done for, for us. And we cannot ignore what God has done for us. He went through pain and torment for us to have a living hope and receiving something so impeccable and unexplainable. Don't you want to go to a place where you can live forever? Don't you want to go to a place where, um, where you, you feel whole again, you feel renewed, you feel, um, healed, you feel weightless. Don't you want to experience that place? But in order to experience that place, we have to check ourselves and we have to live holy for the Lord because he is holy. We cannot, 
You do not want to act. You don't, you don't want your access to be denied from entering into the kingdom of God. I'm going to say that one more time. You do not want your access to be denied from entering into the kingdom of God. I don't want to experience having a key only to unlock the door and it's not even moving. I don't want to experience that, but I always want to pick up the right key so that door can be unlocked and it's going to take sacrifice. A lot of you, a lot of people, we don't want to sacrifice. We want to go with our own will, our own way. We want to um, be happy with our own selves and, and not um, abide by the word of God. But allow the power of God to keep you so salvation can be revealed for you in the last time. We're going to read on to First um, Peter chapter 1. We're going to now read verses 6 through 9. Verses 6 through 9, it says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if it be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, uh, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom have not seen you love, Though now you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with love or with joy, inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This next version, it says, you never saw him, yet you love him. You still don't see him, yet you trust him with laughter and singing because you kept on believing. You'll get what you're looking forward to, total salvation. I get what trials look like. I get what tribulations look like. I get what they look like when you're in it. And I also get what they look like after it. But a lot of times what we do when we experience trials, we want to stay in there and give up on believing on God because you feel like it's too hard. The reason why we can remain depressed or have anxiety or have uh, or be unhappy is because we want to worship and, and remain in that. But God is saying, if you can just believe in me a little while longer, you're going to see something new. You're going to see that you are being born again. You're going to see that you're being renewed. If you just stay in it, I know life can be difficult. The Bible says that there will be trials and tribulations, but it's only to build your faith in God. Now, can we, can we honestly say that our faith is being built or are we continuing to, continuing to give up on God? What are we doing with our life? Are we giving up? Are we saying God is nothing? God, you ain't did nothing for me. It's been forever since I got a bonus check. It's been forever since I got a new car. I'm over here driving this um, raggedy old car, Lord. And who are you? Um, I'm, I'm now going to say that God is nothing, but there is a most high, but there's no God. What sense does that make? If God can bring you through that uh, test, through the trials, through the tribulations, through the fire, he can bring you out and he will bring you out pure and clean. He will refine you. That's what they're for. It's, it's for you to be refined. It's for you to be shaped and molded into something that can help and save this generation today. This is uh, what we go through is to give God the glory afterwards. It's not to stay in it, but it's to, to praise God. I know you guys heard out a short uh, teaching um, the other Sunday. It's to praise God in your tribulations. Praise God in your trials. Though you may look silly doing it, but you are appreciating God for even keeping you enough to bring you through those things. You got to give him praise. You have to give him honor. You have to love him. You cannot 
give up on God. You give up when things are not going the way you want them to go. We can't do that. Because the way you want them to go is not, it's probably not the way that God wants it to go. When you lose your job, sometimes you may stop trusting God. When you experience death in your family, you may stop trusting God. When you put your trust in money, jobs, friends, and materialistic things, we stop trusting in God and we trust in those things. But we cannot be saved by those things. It's God. I want you guys to understand that it is God that saves us. It is not the money that gives us an eternal life. It's not our jobs that gives us eternal life. It's not our friends that gives us eternal life. But it is God who gives us eternal life. And if we are not living holy, how can we experience eternal life? How can we say, I'm going to heaven and you're living any, any kind of way? You cannot, you cannot think that, you have to think of a way that God is trying to direct you to him. God is trying to lead you to him. God has been trying to talk to you. God has been trying to, to talk to you in your sleep, in your dreams, or in your prayer time. But we have come to give up on God. But we cannot do that. Let your faith be tried and still believe God and still rejoice and give him praise, the praise that he deserves. Guys, I went through something so tragic this year. And many of you know, I went through a miscarriage. And I'll I'll be so honest with you. I almost lost faith. I almost lost my trust in God. I almost gave up because I was so hurt. I was filled with so much pain. I was filled with so much darkness. But if I gave up, I would still be in that place. God told me, you have got to get up. You've got to pick your head up and come to me. I had to come to God. I had to come to God. In my pain, in my unbelieving, in my hurt, in my tears, in my frustrations, in my stress, I had to come to God because he was the only one who was able to deliver me. He was the only one. But I didn't allow that trial, that test to cut me completely off from God. So think about what you're going through right now. Is it worth giving up on God? Is it worth missing out on the inheritance that God has reserved for you. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Verses 13 through 17, it says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the formal lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct, not some of it, not halfway, not partially, but all of your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Come on, can you just say, be holy, be holy, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear. And allow me to read another version for you. <clears throat> Again, it's first Peter chapter thir- uh, chapter one. Verses 13 through 17. This is an amplified version. It says, So prepare your minds for action. Be completely sober in spirit, steadfast, self-discipline, spiritually and morally alert. Fix your hope completely 
on the grace of God that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Live as obedient children of God. Do not conform, do not be conformed to the evil desires which govern you in your ignorance before you knew the requirements and transforming power of the good news regarding salvation. But like the Holy One who called you holy, who called you, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Be set apart from the world by your godly character and moral courage, because it is written, you shall be holy, set apart, for I am holy. If you address, uh, if you address as father, the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves in reverent fear of him and with profound respect for him throughout the time of your stay on earth. So I'm going to ask this question. Are we setting ourselves apart? So many thoughts pop in my head when I say that. Are we setting ourselves apart from the world? Guys, as believers, are we setting ourselves apart from this world? And the reason why so many things pop through my mind is because so many things are shown to us on how to live in this world. So many things are broadcasted through TV, through movies, through television shows um, on how they want us to live in this world. And you know what we do? We go and follow that because it's what we see instead of reading what we should be doing. There are television shows now, they, um, I feel like it, it takes marriage out and puts in boyfriend, girlfriend status or boyfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend status when, when marriage should be in. I feel like I see a lot of um, fornication happening and what do we do? We go and fornicate. We see a lot of adultery happening in movies and what do we do? Go to somebody else's husband or wife. We see a lot of things and we think that if this is what we see and I'm scared for our younger generation because they see this growing up. They see this now I'm sure in cartoons that this is how I'm supposed to be living. But if we do not start to build our foundation in Christ right now, we will surely fall. If we don't build our foundation right now, guys, if we do not build that, we have to build our foundation on God or we will fall. We will fall. We've got to be strong and we have to be self-disciplined. To know, oh, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Because the word of God says such and such. This is not what I'm supposed to be a part of. Because the word of God says, how come we have not gained our boldness in Christ, but we've gained our boldness in the world? We cannot continue to live this way. We have to be set apart. When you look at me, I should not look at what's around me. I shouldn't talk like what's around me. I shouldn't be cussing out this and, uh, this and that person. I shouldn't be um, uh, going out and committing adultery with such and such. I shouldn't be doing that. I should be set apart. I should not be following the lust of this world. And because of what we see, I feel like the um, <clears throat> the enemy has now um, has brought out the spirit of fornication, the spirit of sexual immorality, the spirit of lust, selfish ambitions, hatred, jealousy, anger, lying, killing. We see these things, and we live those things, but we can't do that. We can't do that because the word of God says. Those things will allow us not to enter or inherit the kingdom of God. If those things are on my keys, if it was refined to fornication, sexual immortality, lust, selfish ambition, hatred, jealousy, anger, lying, if that was formed on my key right now and I tried to unlock that door, 
it wouldn't go anywhere. So let's check ourselves, guys. Let's self-evaluate ourselves. Let's be set apart. I'm constantly asking God to just, Lord, help me to be set. Lord, work on me first because I'm not perfect at all. I'm not perfect at all, but I am cautious. Lord, I ask God all the time, just convict me. Convict me if I've done something wrong so I won't do it again. Lord, show me what I've done wrong so I won't repeat it. I want to repent. But it takes self-control. It takes self-discipline to really follow the word of God, to really listen and hear and put into action the word of God. Now is the time to pick yourself up and surrender to God. Now is the time to pick yourself up, pick, pick it up and surrender it to God. It's that time now. Whatever stress you're dealing with, whatever pain you're going through, Whatever it is, whatever problem it is that you feel like there is no escape, I'm going to tell you right now that there is an escape. And the escape comes through praise, through worship, through honor and glorifying God and speaking to him and even reading about him. But the Lord really wants you to speak to him. Tell God all of your problems. Tell God all of your situations and allow him to lead you and allow him to comfort you right where you are. You don't have to come perfect before the Lord. Come broken. Come ready to be fixed because that's where the Lord finds strength in you. In your weakness, God is strong. So right now is a time to surrender and go to God. God is calling you into a higher place. Whatever low place you've been at for years, for months, for days, for hours, that attitude you've been catching um, off of everybody, God is trying to call you to a higher place. God is trying to bring you higher than where you are right now. I know the feeling of where you are because I've been there too. I've been low. I've been depressed. I've been down. I've had problems. I've had such, but I'm still smiling. And y'all, this is not a fake smile. This is a real smile. I'm filled with joy. I'm filled with happiness because I did what? I believed in God. I believed that God was going to save me. I believed that God was going to protect me. I believed that God was going to kill me. I believed it. I did not stop. Believing in God. It's time to walk in authority and power and speak to those things that are in the way of eternal living. It's time to speak to those things. It's time to tell those things to get out of the way. Can you just type and say, get out of the way, get out of the way. I'm trying to move. I'm trying to get closer to God. I don't need no distractions. I don't need you telling me in my ear that uh, it's time to go party. It's not time for that kind of thing right now, but it's time to change our mindsets. It's time to start believing again. It's time to start believing again. And for the ones, the believers or unbelievers that you see that's not believing in God, it's time to pray for them. Let's pray for them and pray for them in love and ask God to lead them in the right direction. And while they're in their thing, ask God to just protect them. Even if it's your child, if it's your friend, if it's your family member, if you see them going astray, don't don't punch them in the face, but come to them with love. If they don't want to receive you with love, go to your secret place and pray for them because there is change change happens in prayer change happens in praise change happens in honoring god you have to start interceding for that person you have to start it starts now it's time to change It's time to grow up. It's time to mature. It's time to be in the will of God. And it's time to let 
go. Let it go. It's time to let go. When I uh, brought those groceries in the house, I felt so relieved when I put those groceries down. That sweat that I had on my forehead, I was relieved that those heavy groceries were off my arms. I had some marks from the bags, but they're gone now. But it's time to let it go. Put those things down and surrender it to God. It's time to change. Can you just type in there one more time? It's time to change. And the last part of this chapter, I'm going to read verses 20 through, 22 through 25. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I've enjoyed um, this passage today. So it says, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. And I'm going to read this. It says, since by your obedience to the truth, you have purified yourself for a sincere love of the believers. See that you love one another from the heart always unselfishly seeking the best for one another for you have been born again that is reborn from uh, above spiritually transformed renewed and set apart for his purpose not of um, seed which is perishable but from that which is imperishable and immortal that is through the living and everlasting word of god For all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word, the good news of salvation, which which was preached to you. It's time to start changing. It's time to start loving your brother your sister, your mother, your father, your family, your friends, whoever it is, anyone that has breath in their body, it's time to start loving one another unselfishly. We got to stop all of this anger. We got to stop all um, of this blame games. We got to stop all hold, all holding grudges um, on each other. We've got to stop all that. And we have to start loving others the way Christ loves us. We don't deserve to live today. We don't deserve his abundant mercy, but God keeps giving it. And so since he keeps giving us this, let's work on giving him so much more. Let's work on giving him so much more than what we've been already given him. If we've given him anything at all, how much time have we given him? How much uh, life have we given God? How much of us have we have we've given to God? It's time to start giving yourself completely. It's time to start loving your neighbors. It's time to be reborn again. It's time to be renewed. It's time for a change. It's time to sober up. It's time to start obeying the word of God. It's time to not only listen to the word of God, but be doers of his word. It's time to start seeking God, because he is the one that can give you everlasting life. He is the one that can allow you to live for eternity. Who does not want to make it into heaven? Who does not want to be whole again? Who does not want to be free again? It's time to change our mindsets. It's time to get our minds off of the materialistic things that's of this world. It's time to get our minds off of um, the breakups. He broke up with me. She broke up with me. I gave myself to this person. I gave myself to that person. It's time to cut all that out. And it's time to start focusing on the Lord. Because when you seek ye first the kingdom of God, 
all of the other things will fall the way God wants it, the way God intends for it to fall. Who is for you is for you. I want you to believe that today. It's time to change and it's time to make sure that your key opens the door to the kingdom of God. We have to be sure of our salvation. We can't be questioning ourselves. We can't be questioning, okay, is this right or this wrong? I've been reading the word of God lately and I've been seeing things that I've never seen before in my life. But everything that you need to live by, everything that you need to um, survive, it's in the word of God. It's all in there. But we have got to stop being lazy and we have got to start spending time with God. It's time out for saying, I don't understand it. It's time out for saying, uh, I don't have time. I'm too tired. Um, it's time out. But it's time to start believing in God again. Allow him to refine you. It's time for him to shape you. Allow him to shape you. Even in your brokenness, he will make you whole again. He will make you whole again. But it's time to straighten up. And it's time to get ourselves together and refocus because we are, I'm focusing on the kingdom. I'm focusing on that inheritance that God has reserved for me. God has, pla- God has a place for you and it is time to set yourself apart. Success comes when you die to your flesh and live for God and you win when you die to your flesh and you live for God. It's time. It's time to start maturing spiritually. If you've been in that same boat for all these many years, not reading your word, not even trying, not even trying to get on your knees to pray, not even trying to talk to God, if it's been years, if it's been months, it's time to change that. And it's time to start digging in again and refreshing yourself, refreshing yourself. Allow God to send his Holy Spirit into your life and allow that Holy Spirit to change every single thing that you got going on that the Lord wants a change from. It's time to change. It's time to give it up. And it's time to start believing in God again. Thank you guys so much for listening this morning. I really hope that you got something from this. And I encourage you to read the rest of 1 Peter and 2 Peter and anything else um, in the word of God. I really want you to just read it. See what it has to say, please. And I'm telling you this out of love. Everything that I spoke today is out of love. It's not out of judgment. It's not out of anything but I really want to be bold for Christ. I want to be bold for the Lord. So whatever he wants me to say to his people, I want to be here. I want to be a vessel to speak it to you all in truth and in love. So God bless you guys. I love you so much. And please, let's change some things this week. And let's change it for the rest of our lives. I love you all. Goodbye. Praise the Lord, everybody. We hope and pray you enjoy that wonderful service on today. And we hope and pray that you will tune back in with us again. But at this time is what? It is offering time. It is giving time. We know what the word of the Lord says. When we give unto him, it's going to be given back to us. How? In good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over that men should heap unto your bosom. He also said that he will open up the windows of heaven and he will pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. So we asking you today for those that are members, those that are partners, if you can, sow a $25 love offering on today. Also, those that are part of the membership here, we ask you to remember your tithe also today. But we know that God is going to bless and God is going to open up doors for you because you're putting the kingdom of God first. But before we give, we're going to declare our giving and we want you to, amen. When we read this, read it and take it in and say it like you mean it because we know what the word of the Lord says about giving. So at this time, 
um, the, the giving declare is, is on the screen, and we want to declare this today. Amen. Amen. When I give the seed, I give by faith. When I give by faith, God gives back to me. How? Pressed down, shaken together, and runneth over. I declare that when I give by faith, what? All my needs shall be supplied according to his riches and glory. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore I shall not lack. The promises of God are yes, and it is so. In Jesus' name, amen.